here at Sun and Fun where it came back to an aircraft we talked about once before with James, but it didn't look like this. In fact, it didn't look like anything then, and that wasn't very long ago. I'm Dan Johnson speaking to James Weeby, who's going to tell me how we managed to go from zero to 100 in about uh, Nine three days. months or so. Yeah. Yep. And also you had a little name change. You were Pipper then, and now you're... Chipper. Chipper. Chipper all the way. If all you right. were Pipper, that was clearly just a miscommunication. All right, so we're on beyond that now. Tell me more about the new Chipper that I'm standing here in front of. Okay, this Chipper is a side-by-side, -side, uh, obviously experimental amateur-built airplane. It's designed to use a honeycomb aluminum. We get several benefits out of that. Easy to build. Uh, the big pieces come pre-cut into the correct shape, very lightweight, very strong, great strength to weight to power ratios, and uh, reduced build times as well. So it's kind of like the best of everything all at the same time. Now the honeycomb has got uh, standard aluminum facing on both sides, but inside of it, if you cut it open, it has a hexagonal structure that connects the one side to the other with adhesive. It's been used for decades. Uh, it is an aerospace product. It's uh, uh, readily available and uh, used both in experimental production aircraft and in probably every civil airliner in the world. Is that right? Wow. Well, that should be some proven to carry hundreds of people around. You can buy this in big sheets then or something? Or how do, yeah. you, how do you get the stuff? Yeah, you do buy it in sheets. Uh, the manufacturer, you can buy it like plywood. The only problem is it costs a lot more than plywood. <laughs> Unfortunately, but oh well. It's, it is very light though. You had a piece of it that uh, uh, you had down at the Seabrink show and man, it, of course it was a small piece, but still it weighed nothing. I mean, seemed to weigh nothing anyhow. Yeah, that's correct. It's very light. Uh, typical Mostly weight. air in there. Yeah. Uh, a square foot of it weighs anywhere from six tenths of a pound up to a little less than a pound, depending on what thickness and, you know, facing the aluminum facing that you it, use. Yeah, okay. Is the inside always the same? No, the corrugated you can part? get... That's different too then? different thicknesses So you buy it for sizes. application? Yes. Yes, that's correct. Okay, so tell me a little more about what you did, because you accomplished a lot in a short time. How's that possible? Well, besides not sleeping, probably for three months. Sleep is optional, <laughs> and friends are mandatory, and a loving wife Pretty is good even friends. more mandatory. Yeah, that's right. Uh, we really did. We went from clean sheet in early January to airworthiness certificated in less than 90 days. Uh, uh, I don't know if that's a record, but it's got to be up there. I've heard the P-51 was around 88 days. Yeah, but they I had uh, they had millions of dollars at yeah. stake. No, we just uh, we you had a regular fast, budget at stake, right? And uh, <laughs> I had a team that helped me. Uh, I had uh, commercial assistance from my own people, and then on top of that, I had amateur assistance, both from my wife, and uh, plug into a guy by the name of Landon March, who was just my best bud on this project. Showed up, helped, worked evenings and weekends. He and I were just a mad team putting things together as rapidly as we possibly could. Another plug to speed things up is this stuff. That's Ortex. And what is that? Okay. Ortex, high technology fabric, uh, single step to done. So uh, the process. So tell of, people yeah. what that means and compare it to Dacron. not Ortex. Yeah. Dacron is available for a number of brands. The vast majority of all ragwing airplanes use Dacron that's, you know, glued and stretched and heated and shrunk and painted. This stuff. You put down the glue on both surfaces, you put it down, you tack it up with an iron, it's bonded to the structure. You shrink it just like it's old fashioned monocoat from a radio control airplane and let the glue set, shrink it again, you're done, it's pre-painted, it's it. And it's, there's one of the magic points is yes. not having to paint it, which is both mm -hmm. an, an, an effort and almost a piece of artwork Yeah. and weight, right? Yeah. Yeah, we kept track of the uh, weight of the uh, Ortex, and uh, my recollection is glue and everything, the Delta to cover both wings is around eight pounds. My guess is, is that we've got uh, around or less than 12 pounds of covering on this wow. airplane. So I would say that translates to roughly a 50% weight saving. Yeah. In just in just the fabric. And I mean. time savings. Oh, and that too, which yeah. is very important to most builders. Well, for us, it was so important because we knew that we had the sun and fun clock ticking. And uh, in the worst way, I wanted to have the thing flying here at Sun and Fun. But the backup plan was to have it here at Sun and Fun, and an airworthiness certificate was a bonus. The preparation for building it, I think what the first time builder would like is, is that the entire rear fuselage builds on a flat table. The bottom of the airplane is perfectly flat. We did that to make it easy to build. So you just lay these big bulkheads down over a sheet of metal on the bottom and then start gluing it together. When the glue's set, 
you can flip it over and run your rivets. Easy. Now, for a guy who's built an airplane before, uh, although we're using honeycomb, it's going to be very, very much like putting a zenith. It's the same monocoque uh, aluminum shell for the fuselage, but instead of using a stamped or formed uh, aluminum former, we're using a pre-cut precision CNC cut honeycomb former. Less steps to get it done. So what the, uh, the guy who's built before is going to see is that things fit together as to how the things put the together. Beauty of CNC, they glue yeah, together, no. they rivet together, and although it's a different material, the, the whole build process is going to feel very, very conventional. Okay, so translate that into some time for me. This very first airplane, which is a prototype, included some engineering time and up to triple quad redos on some things. <laughs> uh, we logged uh, professional plus amateur. We logged probably between 1,100 and 1,200 hours. Okay, for, for a first article, that's we, not too much. We think first kits out to the door in the hands of an experienced builder could be as low as 800. We think that with some continued improvements, that, uh, that experienced builders are going to be able to build this airplane in 600 hours as we gain familiarity. The reason is, is although there's a lot of drilling and riveting, there's very little in the way of, of having to figure out where to cut. You know, everything, all the ribs are pre-cut. So, so where we find people take going to have to take time is sealing the edges of the honeycomb. Ah, okay. That's probably 80 to 100 hours worth of your work. Oh, is that right? Now, you're talking about where the two faces come together and the honeycomb's in the middle. You're doing this part? No. If you uh, turn around, this is a honeycomb rib. It's solid here, and that's because the honeycomb, which is a mesh, has been filled with a filler okay. and then sanded smooth. There's a certain filler you do that with. And yes. So there's where... Well, probably the biggest single chunk of time would come from that, huh? Yeah, yeah. It's doing stuff like that. Yeah. There's no one part of this project. Uh, you can get a lot of quick gratification. The tail feathers come look like tail feathers with all the gussets pre-drilled. Oh, really? Okay. Start drilling and click them together. The cabin comes as great big pieces with notches so that you can fit the pieces of the honeycomb uh, in the I see. cabin. Okay. You can tack glue it and have it look like a cabin in its first day. Really? Wow. Yeah. And getting some satisfaction like that's very important. I think so that's people, really important. Yeah. You got to get. You got to know it's an airplane. Yeah. Not just work on little parts for a while. Correct. Um, what kind of power are you using? Oh, great question. We've got uh, five or six engines on our build sheet now. Uh, engine number one is an engine I've always admired from a distance. I see one letter on it to give it away to me. HKS, what is it? HKS, a Japanese 700E. Um, it's a 60 horsepower engine. Do you uh, think that's going to be enough for a two-seater? Uh, we're going to find out. <laughs> uh, on a spec basis, yes, but on also on a spec basis with 60 horsepower at full gross, uh, it's going to be a little better than a Cessna 150. And I want spectacular. Yeah. We've just opened up uh, officially now uh, the 80 horsepower 912 UL. Okay. And it's would just be spectacular. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With that and that's engine. a great engine, that 80 horse. Yeah. Which I, would be plenty for you then. Yeah. Since we're talking about engine, tell me a little bit about fuel quantity available. We have a 14 gallon tank on each side, so take your pick. Oh, uh, wow. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be a lot of fuel then. 28, 28, 28 gallons? Wow. 28 burning four. You're yeah. ending up in the neighborhood of seven hours in yeah. the air. No complaints with that. Yeah, no, that's, that's excellent. All right, one last question for you, and then I want a web address so people can yeah. pester you with all the questions I forgot to ask. But how long before somebody can have one of these babies? Uh, we're delivering uh, sub-kits here in April and okay. full kits in May. All right. So and We've got a pretty good order book. Uh, our plan is is that uh, we want to get in the neighborhood of 20 to 24 kits shipped out over the course of the next six months. Okay. So people can buy it, and they can a get it A reasonable but still promising goal for those that have an yeah. interest. Good for yeah, you. for sure. All right, so now people, now, that's surely, I, I tried to ask you all the questions I could, but there's always more. So how do people find you on the web so that they can sure. come to you? Be Light Aircraft, B-E-L-I-T-E, aircraft.com. All right, there you go. More about things that James Weeby has done in both video and print form and lots of other affordable aviation available on bydanjohnson.com. Thanks for joining James Weeby and I here at Sun and Fun in the Sun. Thank you.